All right, welcome back. In the last part, we actually drew our shear diagram. And remember, this is a simply supported beam. It had a pin on point A and a roller on point C and a point load right in the middle of the span. And that load was five kips. And we used what we knew about positive internal shear uh, sign conventions to go ahead and draw this shear diagram. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the positive sign conventions for internal moments and use that information alongside our shear and our free body diagram information to go ahead and draw our moment diagram. So the very first thing I want to do is go ahead and draw the moment diagram axis. And this is what I'm going to draw the moment diagram on. This is going to be M. And that stands for moment. And the units are going to be kip feet, right? Force times. Now one of the very first things we can do is go ahead and draw our first moment. This is actually going to be zero and that's because there was a pin support here and we know that pins do not support moment. But if we want to take a look at this a little bit more carefully and a little bit more in detail we can actually go up here to the free body diagram and make a very small cut here and look at this tiny tiny portion of the beam which I'll just go ahead and draw here. So here's point A here is that reaction of 2.5 kips. And remember, when we take a cut on the right side, our internal moment positive sign convention would be counterclockwise. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the moment here. I'll just call it MA. And remember, this distance is very, very, very tiny. And so what we can do is we can take the sum of moments about, let's say, this point. I'll just go ahead and call O. So if I took the sum of moments about 0, 0.0 and I said this way was positive, then I would have a positive MA here. And then this force, this 2.5 kips, would cause a clockwise moment about 0, 0.0, right? So that would be negative 2.5 kips times some distance, which I'll just call X. And X I'll assume to be very, very tiny. So let's just say it's... 0 0.0000001 feet or just something incredibly small, right? This is just a tiny portion of this beam and we're trying to figure out what the moment would be right at point A. So if X is tiny, then this is just going to go to zero. And if this equation is set to zero, then we can easily see that MA is equal to zero kip feet. So the moment here right at point A or just to the right side of point A is zero. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at this point right on the left side of B. So I'm going to take a cut just to the left side of B and I'm going to go ahead and draw that diagram here. We have our 2.5 kips here. This distance is three feet. This is point A and point B would just be to the right side of this point. And since we're not including point B in this diagram, we are not going to include this five kips here. But I'm going to go ahead and draw my positive internal moment, which is this way. I'll just call it MBL because it's on the left side of B. And I'm going to go ahead and sum moments about this point, which I will call Q. So the sum of moments about point Q should be equal to zero. And that's because if this beam is in static equilibrium, then every other portion of this structural element should be in static equilibrium as well, no matter how big or small. So I have this positive MBL, right? And then this 2.5 kips is going to create a negative moment about point Q, right? So it's going to be negative 2.5 kips times 3 feet, and that's equal to zero. Well, 2.5 kips times 3 feet is 7.5 kip foot, right? And if I add that to the other side, I get MBL is equal to 7.5 kip foot. So that is the moment right to the left side of B. I'm going to go ahead and just write 7.5 kip foot. Now, what if I take a small cut just to the right side of B? So now we're going to include this 5 kips. Well, that diagram is going to look like this. I'm going to have 2.5 kips here. This is point A. And now I'm going to include P, which is 5 kips. And I'll just call this point Z. And I'm going to go ahead and draw my internal moment, this positive moment. I'll call MBR now that it's on the right side of point B, right? This cut here. And if I took the sum of moments about point Z, and I said this way, 
counterclockwise was positive, then I would get this MBR, right? That's a positive MBR, and then minus 2.5 kips times 3 feet. And since this 5 kips is right at that point, that point really doesn't have, or that point load really doesn't have a distance to create a moment about point Z on. So that's basically zero. And this is equal to zero. And again, MBR is going to be equal to 2.5 times 3, which is 7.5. And if I add that to the other side, MBR, I'll just say, is 7.5. So right to the right side of point B, we're actually going to get the same exact value. So this point at point B, the moment diagram is going to show 7.5 kip foot. Now, how do we know what's going on between point A here and point B here? Well, if we look at the shear diagram, we know that the shear is constant from point A to point B. So that means on the moment diagram, we're going to have a linear increase up to 7.5 kip foot. Now, why is it an increase? Well, this shear between point A and point B is positive. So we know that if the shear is positive, then the moment is going to increase. If the shear is negative, we know the moment is going to decrease. So we know this is linear and increasing on the moment diagram between points A and B because at the shear diagram between point A and B, the shear is constant and positive. So because the shear is constant here, this is going to be linear. And because it's a positive shear, this is going to be increase. And we know that from point B to C, this is going to be linear because B and C, the shear diagram is constant, and it's going to decrease because the shear is negative. So we know that the moment at the very end at point C is also zero, just like point A. And that makes sense, right? Because at point C, we had a roller support and rollers do not support moment. Now, what if we wanted to take a shear or a moment value? We wanted to figure out what the moment value was somewhere here. So halfway between points A and B. In other words, what if we wanted the moment right here at 1.5 feet from the right side of A? Well, if I scroll down and then I go ahead and draw this portion of the beam here, so between points A and then this point, let's just call that point K. This is point A. We know that we had a reaction here of 2.5 kips. This distance is 1.5 feet. And here at point K, we can go ahead and draw our internal moment, our positive internal moment, which I'll just call MK. And we can use this free body diagram to figure out what our moment is at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and sum moments about point k right here and i'm going to say counterclockwise is positive so we have a positive mk this moment right here minus 2.5 kips times this one and a half feet so 1.5 feet is equal to zero well 2.5 times 1.5 that is 3.75 kip feet and if i add that to the other side right this negative sign here we're going to get mk is equal to 3.75 kip feet. And that is our moment right here. So this is 3.75 kip feet. So there you go. We have our moment diagram for this beam up here. And we used our information, our knowledge about positive sign convention for internal forces or internal moment and shear to figure out what our shear and moment diagrams should look like.